Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Bullock here, and this geometry lesson is on the tangent ratio. It deals with right triangles, so let's go ahead and take out the right triangle right here. Remember, a right triangle has a hypotenuse and two legs. Well, check out this right tri triangle right here. Can I convince you that's angle B? And can I convince you that this angle up here is an acute angle, and this is an acute angle right here? Well, let's deal with these acute angles. It deals with the acute angles and the legs of the uh, of a right triangle. So I've made three columns here, and I'm going to put my acute angles here. Let's, let's first talk about angle A. Okay, angle A, with respect to angle A, can you see the opposite leg right here? If I go straight across, that would be the opposite leg. All right, so this would be side BC when it's talking about angle A, the opposite leg. I'm not talking about the hypotenuse at all. I'm just talking about the two legs. So with this angle right here, it either has this leg or this leg. The one that's opposite it is called the opposite leg, and the one that touches this angle is called the adjacent leg. So the opposite leg is BC. The adjacent leg is AB. Okay? All right, let's talk about angle C. Okay, here's an acute angle. This angle has an opposite leg AB this time, and the adjacent leg is BC. Okay, so opposite means the leg that's a completely across, opposite leg, and then adjacent leg. All right, so um, uh, a ratio, you guys, since we're dealing with a tangent ratio, a ratio is just a fraction or a form of a fraction, you guys. And so the tangent ratio is this. Don't let it confuse you, you guys. It just says the tangent of an acute angle. So I'm talking about these two acute angles right here. The tangent of these acute angles is the ratio of the opposite leg to the adjacent leg. It has to be a right triangle right here. Notice the hypotenuse is not even involved right here. On tangents, the hypotenuse is not being used. It's just opposite leg over the adjacent leg. All right, so let's try some of this, you guys, over here. Uh, above, the tangent of angle A right here would be the opposite leg, BC, over the adjacent leg, AB. So BC over AB. Okay, if I said angle C, the tangent of angle C is opposite leg, AB, over adjacent leg, BC. So AB over BC. Okay, so let's try some of that. Let's find the tangent. Uh, and uh, the tangent of S and the tangent of R in each triangle, and then write your answers as a, uh, a fraction, as in the decimal, rounded to four places. All right, so here we go. Getting all kinds of emails here. I'm at school right now, and I'm just I'm having a substitute the uh, following day, so uh, this is for my substitute, basically. Anyways, um, so let's deal with, uh, I have two acute angles, angle S and angle R. I'm going to find the tangent of angle S. Whoops, let me go back here, you guys. You saw the answers. All right, so the tangent of angle S is going to be uh, opposite leg over adjacent leg. So the tangent of S is 80 over 18. Now, I know 2 goes into both of those. 2 goes into 84 times. 2 goes into 18 9 times. So, I'm sorry, 40 times. So, 40 over 9 would be the tangent of S. And the tangent of R would be opposite leg over adjacent leg. So, it would be 18 over 80, which is 9 fortieths. Notice this 82. I don't even need that 82. I don't need that until tomorrow's lesson, which is on sine and cosine. The tangent does not deal with the hypotenuse at all. Only sine and cosine do, which is tomorrow's lesson. All right, here, let's go to the tangent of angle R. Opposite over adjacent, so 60 over 45. 15 goes into those four and three times, so four-thirds. The tangent of angle S is opposite 45 over adjacent 60. 45 over 60 reduces to three-fourths. And, of course, convert them to decimal, you guys. So here, 40 divided by 9 is 4.444. 9 divided by 40 is that. You have calculators. Now, I told my students about uh, a week ago that you're going to be needing a scientific calculator. So if you're still sitting in my class right now and you don't have a scientific calculator, I want you to pick up your pointing finger and point it right at your nose and say, shame on me, because I asked you to pick up a calculator. You can get them at the dollar store, no problem, a scientific calculator. You'll make this class test a lot easier when you get to it if you have one. If you don't, this class test is going to be a bear. Get yourself a calculator. Don't procrastinate. Get it, get it, get it. Get yourself a calculator. Get a calculator. Get a calculator. Okay. Uh, so find each value using the chart or a scientific calculator. Well, we're not going to use a chart because all my students have a scientific calculator with them because they were good boys and girls like I asked. The tangent of 63. You pick up your scientific calculator and you punch in 
either 63 and then your tangent button, so 63 and your tangent button, and some calculators do it the other way. You got to do tangent and 63. Now, when you do that, you should get 1.963. Okay, let's try this one tangent of 15. So, either depending on what calculator you have, you press 15 then tangent, or you press tangent then 15, and you get. Um, uh, 0.268. Now, if you're not getting those, that's because you're in the wrong mode. You're in gradients mode or radians mode. And so look at your screen and you see either a GRAD or a RAD. You need to say, have it say DEG for degrees. So if it's not, then change it to degrees. All right. All right. So find the value of x to the nearest tenth. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to go the tangent of 32. The tangent of 32 equals opposite 11 over adjacent x. So write that down. Tangent of 32 equals 11 over x. All right, I, I put the number 2 in there already. So find the tangent of 32. So press tangent of 32 or 32 tangent and you get 0.625. And then 0.625, make it over 1 because when it's over 1, you have a proportion. And in a proportion, you can go ahead and do cross multiply. So 0.625x equals 1 times 11. All right, so then divide 11 by 6, 0.625, and you get 17.6. Okay, and it says round it to the nearest tenth. Okay, let's do the same thing here. The tangent of 17 equals opposite over adjacent, so equals 9 over x. All right, tangent of 17 is 0 0.301, so it's over 1 now. Cross multiply and divide 9 by 0 0.306. I said 301, didn't I? 306. I think it's like 305 something, but it rounded up. So x is 29.4. Okay, this is easy, you guys. Find uh, the values x using the definition of tangent. Then find the value of x using your theorems from yesterday's lesson. All right. Actually, I'm just going to, you just, let's just do yesterday's lesson on this, you guys. Um, uh, you can do tangent ratio if you want. I wouldn't do this, you guys. You can do Pythagorean theorem if you want. I wouldn't do this. Let's do yesterday's lesson. This is a 45-45-90 triangle. If that's 8, then this is 8 right here. Remember, and this is 8 root 2. Remember that? Here's the So this is x equals 8. Here, this is a 30-60-90 triangle. Whatever that is, the longer leg is root 3 times the shorter leg. So this side must be 11. Okay, so this is 11. This would be 22, but it's not asking for that. Okay, this is 4. This is 4 root 3. Alrighty, okay, if you are in my geometry class, uh, I would probably assign uh, that as your homework assignment right there. Take care.